In this demonstration, we're going to demonstrate how via nano segmentation, we can detect and remediate any attacks uh, using Illumio. The second thing I'm going to do is how we can massively reduce the surface area, your exposure to attacks using Illumio. And finally, I'm going to show you how you can do compliance using Illumio. So uh, if you want to know what Illumio does, we basically, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. here we go. So we secure the 80% of the traffic that your firewall missed. If you think about what we do, we spend about 90% of our traffic security dollars to secure 20% of the traffic, right? And most of the awesome hacks, most of the ones that work, they happen behind the firewall. You have no ability to detect what's going on. Illumio was basically, uh, we want to secure the 80% of the traffic that the perimeter missed. And we've also wanted to be able to take your security anywhere. And anywhere could be your data center, it could be Amazon, it could be Azure, it could be any combination thereof. And it could be a never ending evolution of anywhere. So before we dive into how we do that, let me just do a quick Vulcan mind meld. Um, behind me right here is actually a high level architecture of the product. And if you move this way, I can show it to you. Go ahead, it's okay. You will not be on camera. Uh, so this is actually a high level architecture of the product. And um, on your right here, or your left, my right, uh, you'll see those orange boxes. Those orange boxes are what we call VENs, or virtual enforcement nodes. They are installed inside of the operating system. So that could be our bare metal server. That could be a VM. It allows you to completely decouple your security from the network, right? If you want to be able to go anywhere, you can't be reliant on any, any form of infrastructure. It's hypervisor agnostic, it's network agnostic. You literally, it, is, it goes anywhere. And before I tell you more about what it is, I want to talk to you about all the things it isn't, okay? The VEN is not in line. It doesn't require any kernel mods. It is not a host firewall. You really got to think about it like it's an antenna. And antennas have two things. It's antennas send information and antennas receive information. When you spin up a workload, the antenna, the bed, is going to send traffic to this thing on your right, that orange box. It's called the policy compute engine. The policy compute engine is the brains of the operation. It is the newest member of your security staff. It works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And what it does, it is going to compute the optimal security for every single workload, regardless of where they're running. And it's going to send it back down to these vents, and the vents take that and they use what's already in these operating systems to write the rules. So if it's a Linux workload, we use what's already there. We use IP tables. If it's a Linux workload, a Windows workload, excuse me, we write rules to the Windows filtering platform. That allows your application security to evolve and change as quickly as your computing and your applications change. It allows your applications to go anywhere. And the beauty of this is we've developed an algorithm that's going to compute the perfect, most optimal security for every one of your applications, no matter where they are running. Your security can go anywhere. So now I'm going to show you how we can, uh, via nano segmentation, we can dramatically reduce the surface area of attack. And while I'm going to, this is uh, my security DJ, Noob Dog, over here, and he's going to spin some security stuff for us now. Um, what you see on the screen right now is actually what we call illumination mode. And in illumination, what we actually do is we show you what's going on behind your firewall, right? So attacks get behind your perimeter, right? And when things get behind that perimeter firewall where you spent 90% of your traffic and you missed a bunch of stuff, what do you do? You're, you don't have any idea of what's going on. So the first thing that a bad actor will try to do is they'll try to do a reconnaissance of other things that are going on. And once you're behind that firewall, you have limited to no visibility of what's going on. With Illumio, you actually have an, a, an L3, L4 enforcement point at every single point inside of your data center. So one of these workloads just went out and hit a recon, and not only did we detect that it, it basically broke policy, but now we can visualize and help you understand what it tried to do. You can see exactly what the bad actor is trying to do. And now, I'm going to have a new uh, quarantine that host. So if I wanted to do that before, I would have to do all kinds of crazy network rules that take forever to quarantine it. A new is going to drag and drop that one into a quarantine zone, and when he does that, it's going to rewrite all the security policies for that guy. So let's click on that dupe, and we can now see that the only way you can reach that is via SSH. So what happened? Something we we had a policy set up, 
we've computed what the policy was for that web, that, that individual OS instance of that web tier. We quarantined it by simply dragging and dropping it and we reprogrammed the policy compute engine, re dynamically reprogrammed the rules for that particular OS instance and it did it dynamically. Pretty cool stuff. So your security changes and adapts to your infrastructure and you don't have to think about it. It just happens in the background. And so we can quickly detect and remediate threats as they happen and you have full awareness of what's going on. So now I just showed you how we could, you know, be in nano segmentation, we detect and remediate threats. Let me now show you how we can massively reduce the surface area of attack uh, for an application. So once again, we're back to your, uh, this is, we're back to the illumination view. And let's face the facts, network-centric security is super cumbers cumbersome. How do you write your security policies today? You say, you know, zone A can talk to zone B, or this IP address can talk to that IP address. What if we had to take your security team and say, look, I want you to start writing rules for an application, but here's the deal. I'm not going to tell you anything about the underlying network. I'm not going to tell you anything about the IP addresses, the subnet zones, VLANs, nothing about what's under, underneath it. We have solved that very fundamental problem. And how do we do that? The first thing is, in Illumination, we're showing you live application traffic. A red line indicates that there's a flow that we have detected, but you have not written a security policy that addresses it. Anoop just clicked on that line, and we now see this traffic coming in from the load balancer to the web tier. Interesting information. But also see that it's talking port 80 Tomcat. But because we have this the vent, this antenna thing, it's also telling us this is the process it's talking to on there. We're getting granular all the way down to the host. Now I'm going to build a whitelist rule with Illumio, but I'm not going to use any IP addresses, subnet zones, or VLANs, or anything like that. Let's write a rule, Anoop. So, the rule that I'm about to write, I'm just going to describe what I want to have happen. I'm going to say that the, uh, the Nginx load balancer can talk to the web tier and can talk to the Tomcat process. That's how you write a rule with the Lumio. I'm going to have a loop save that, and what's going to happen is that line is going to turn from red to green. The policy compute engine just figured out what the optimal security was and wrote a very granular security policy down to that host, and it did it dynamically. And it did it without, we didn't, we didn't describe the network, we just described the interactions that we wanted to happen, and we computed the optimal security for that. So, uh, Adu, do me a favor, spin up 10 uh, web instances in Amazon. So what's gonna happen now is Amazon's gonna go spin up 10 new web servers of the application tier, and while Amazon's doing its stuff, we're, um, in the background, we're gonna compute the optimal security, and while it's doing that, I am going to talk to you about compliance. How do you achieve compliance usually, right? It's a pain in the butt. Once again, it's this network-centric thing. You have to describe and, can everybody, oh, by the way, can everybody take one step forward because we're blocking the aisle and the fire marshal shows up and then I get smacked, right? So um, uh, what's gonna, what's gonna, you know, traditionally we write our compliance, we have to go to the network team. It's a very intensive process. If you have PII, because you have an HR team, maybe you have to do HIPAA because you're in medical. With, or the worst word is PCI. If, with PCI 3.0, there's three things that we satisfy and we do it with quick clicks. First thing is, you have to be able to visualize the PCI environment. Anoop has just pulled up two credit card processing applications. One of them's in Europe, one of them is in North America. The first thing you'll notice is we've isolated the European version from the, uh, from the uh, US did it, and we did it without the network. There's no reliance on the network. So we're visualizing the application topology, and that satisfies DSS 1.0 for PCI. Boom, getting off the bus, done. Second thing, and I think we've shown you this a lot today, we are writing enforcement rules. We're writing firewall-based rules, and we're doing it dynamically. We've shown you that already. The other thing which we could do, we could do automatically and dynamically, is we could do instant encryption on demand with one click. Let me show you how we do that. So let's do a PCI rule. So for my PCI rule, I'm going to say that everything in my PCI environment can talk to everything in my PCI environment but just as a, as a general rule, but they, all the traffic has to run over IPsec. What we're going to do is we're going to activate what's already inside of the operating system. So if it's a Linux workload, we use FreeSwan, StrongSwan, what already is in your kernel. If it's we're, no kernel mods, that, that is one of our core philosophies. If it's a Windows workload, we're going to spin up the native IPsec capabilities. We can do IPsec Linux to Linux, Windows to Windows, and Linux to Windows without one click and it does it dynamically, and as those applications evolve and change, the policy computage will always adapt and recompute the optimal security. You don't have to do it. 
It's the first time where your security is run via an algorithm rather than someone sitting in front of the desk doing it. So while I was uh, spewing right there, uh, let's hope that Amazon did its thing. So um, what should have had, yeah, there it goes. So Amazon just forked up 10 new instances of the web tier. The policy compute engine, while I was talking about compliance, dynamically recomputed the optimal security for each one of these hosts, and it didn't just do it at the host, we're also programming the F5 LTM in the middle, so we've turned your F5 load balancer into a stateful firewall, stateful packet filter. Let's click on it. It just went out and wrote rules for each one of the new web tiers that just spun up inside of Amazon. So basically your security changes and adapts and evolves, not at the host, but we're also turning you at the LTM that you probably have in your network, we're pretty big into a stateful packet filter. Um, there are many more use cases that we saw. We have customers like Morgan Stanley, who just talked on the, on the front cover of the Wall Street Journal last week about Illumio. Uh, CAA, Plantronics, NTT, using our product. Find one of these awesome people in orange, or Noob Dog over here is a, is a wizard himself, and we can answer any questions about the product, because even though I've only shown you three use cases today, there's many more things that we can do with the product. Thank you very much.